a big story. The public inquiry into the post office scandal has led to even more questions over how hundreds of branch managers were wrongly convicted of theft. According to The Telegraph, at the end of the 90s, the Foreign Office warned the Prime Minister, Sir Tony Blair, that scrapping the Horizon scheme would damage relations with Japan. Now, the former Prime Minister ordered officials to go ahead with the new post office IT system, despite being told that it had been plagued with problems. Now, that independent IT expert had found these problems. So, should Tony Blair be held to account? Uh, well, joining me going head to head in the clash, uh, Matthew Stadland and Benedict Spence. Uh, Matthew Stadland. If Tony Blair did anything wrong, if, and it's an important word there, then obviously he needs to be held to account in some form. I mean, you asked earlier whether his, his knighthood should be mm. withdrawn. There are plenty of questions as to whether he should have got a knighthood in the first place, given the disaster of the Iraq war strategy and what unfolded after the invasion. On the specifics of this, mm. and in the Telegraph piece, his own spokesman, and you might expect him to, to come out in defence of Sir Tony Blair, but his own spokesman said that Blair, Blair's only concern, really, was to get a viable system agreed that would actually deliver what the government wanted. That, that, was, that was the suggestion. So, look, I mean, this is a thorny issue, mm. and there would have been, no doubt, lots of toings and froings at the time. We really need to get on top of the actual detail before we start condemning Blair on this particular issue. But, he, but it's clear that he would have been aware that there were problems with the system. And if he had only looked at that, if you, if you are somebody who's leading this and you've been told about problems, yet you are trying to satisfy another master... If. Which... That's why I use the word if. And it's a, a tiny word that does a lot of heavy <clears> lifting. <throat> but if it was made clear to Blair that this system was riddled with problems, but he decided to go ahead with it anyway, I mm. mean, to continue it, because he inherited it from the Tories in 1997, decided to go ahead with it anyway for ulterior motives, you know, to keep Japan happy, then that would be totally, totally wrong. Having looked at the article, I'm not mm. convinced of that. If it is the case, then that's very bad. Well, it does sound bad. Benedict? Mm. Um, I agree with Matthew that this is possibly not the thing over which uh, we should question whether or not Tony Blair should have got a knighthood. I think that there are a long list of things uh, there, but equally I think that the honour system is uh, deeply flawed in this country and that nobody really takes it too seriously anyway. As to whether or not he should be held to account, obviously he should mm. be held to account if there is concrete evidence that he was aware that it was flawed and he still pushed ahead anyway. Um, I say that even though we need to recognise that uh, in a in a very sort of uh, globalised world where we do rely on foreign companies and foreign governments to perform mm. certain tasks elsewhere, sometimes things do get mixed up uh, where they shouldn't do. I mean, you've got to bear in mind, actually, that Fujitsu has billions of pounds worth of contracts uh, mm. across all sorts of areas of the UK, most of which actually perform very well. It's, uh, broadly speaking, a very successful company, otherwise it simply wouldn't have got to the size uh, that it is. I also do wonder whether or not sometimes a large name like Tony Blair is thrown out to distract from people lower down the chain who perhaps actually had more say over this, who aren't perhaps as well known, uh, from the, the blame being pointed at them. And I think, you know, for instance, we often see this with Sir Keir Starmer, of, uh, you know, he was in charge, he was the director of public prosecutions when people were prosecuted, he should be held to account. You kind of think, OK, but he was at the top of a very large organisation and he could only work with the information that was presented to him. And whilst it's I understand yeah, but, but that he was, Buck does but, but, but have to Tony, stop with Tony people, was presented with this information, as far as we can see here. Well, has he and responded he, to that? And he went along and he knew that the system was plagued with problems. We need to know says. what... Well, we need to hear what his response to that is. And the thing is, I, I, whilst I am very much aware that people at the top of the chain, they are ultimately where the responsibility lies, I do think we would do very well in this country to be aware that actually information that a Prime Minister or a Director of Public Prosecutions or whatever that person might be can only act within the remit of what they are presented with and actually we do need to be clear what that information is because we've had plenty of... Dominic Cummings, for instance, has been on record at length about the amount of information that was withheld from Boris Johnson or given to Boris Johnson about what certain people were saying whilst he was in number 10 as an example of how government simply doesn't function effectively in this country. Now, whatever you think of Dominic Cummings, I do think that there is a lot to be said there for how the flow of information from the civil service, from various different government departments, it affects outcomes and it isn't always entirely clear. And I think actually you, but you there sound, is a question. You, you sound like you're almost kind of excusing him. It sounds like you're making a pathway for him to get out of this. Not really. Well, at I'd the end like of the it. day, 
when at the end mm. of the day, if mm. this had been a success and it had been a great thing, yeah. he would have taken the honours. So he gets a knighthood for certain things that he was supposedly doing. I don't mm. know why he got mm. a knighthood anyway. I would never yeah. have given him one. But this would have been part of his remit, one of the reasons why he would have been given this knighthood. So he gets all these great things when good things happen around him. So when there's something bad, mm. then I don't think it's fair to then say, oh, well, we don't know how close no, no. he was to the action. Not to, no, 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 his spokesman said mm. the implicit idea that Tony Blair received warnings and ignored them is categorically wrong. Now, look, mm. I can't be judge and jury on mm. this particular well, issue where there are lots of that, doctors. Yeah, I'm giving you a, a scent. And one, mm. my view as a political commentator is if it is proved mm. that Tony Blair did something wrong, then of course he needs to take his share of accountability. On the issue so that. So, in that, I in that to... would you be tempted to say that perhaps it's one of the things that, of the many things that he's done, that maybe it's time to re retract his night? I felt very uncomfortable in the first place with mm. Tony Blair getting a knighthood when we know what happened exactly. as a direct consequence of the failed Iraq policy. No, no, you said that it sounded a little bit like I was excusing him. Mm. I need to make this point. We keep on going through prime ministers and governments in this country, and actually something that seems to be fairly consistent is that the system itself and the transparency of the system itself doesn't change with any of those prime ministers, and that's mm. what I'm saying. I'm all for investigating Tony Blair, whatever his role was in this, and for holding him to account, but I would like to know what is it about the system itself which is populated by people lower down the chain and the flows of information that they have control of? What is it about that system that means we keep on getting situations at the start of this Tory government, we had a re-inquiry into the Hillsborough disaster, yeah. and th th that was all laid open. Now we've got this one. In the middle of it, we've got the COVID inquiry. That seems to be the constant. Well, it does. It, I mean, I, well, it's true. I think civil servants should also have a lot to answer for. Yes, I would agree with that too. But